Welcome back guys, time for another Whiskey Wednesday and this week, I remember last week I said something about it being quite a controversial product, uh, to some it is, to some it isn't, uh, but this week we are looking at Jack Daniels. Now, this just isn't any Jack Daniels, it is what they call the Master Distillers range and this is Master Distiller number one, dedicated to Mr. Jack Daniel himself. Now. I was chatting to Cam Dawson, who is the UK brand ambassador for Jack Daniels a couple of weeks ago when they launched their new 150th bottlings. And they just kind of asked him, you know, what is it? What's the big deal? Is it a particularly strange mash bill? Is it, you know, matured in a different part of the warehouse or anything like that? And long story short, it isn't. It's just old number seven. So the standard number seven we know, the black label, bottled at 43% ABV. And I believe it's the same for each one. Now there are seven bottles in the Master Distillers range because there have been seven Master Distillers at Jack Daniels. This is the first one. Um, I found it around the corner in my local supermarket for 25 quid, so it's not expensive. And essentially, we all know that as whiskey drinkers or anyone who drinks alcohol, um, the more alcohol you provide to a spirit, the more esters, the more flavours you should release. So in theory, this should be regular number seven, but with a little bit more oomph and a little bit more kind of pizzazz about it. So when you look at the bottle, uh, I threw the box away sadly, but it comes in like a very nice box with Jack's face on the front of it. Looks like a typical number seven black label, but it's got this nice gold outlining. It says number one on the front, 43% ABV, and it's just a one-off limited release. Now Jack have been making the same mash bill for what, 70, 70 plus years, something like that. Uh, very high corn mash bill, sort of it, around sort of 75%, 76% maybe, maybe even 78%, I'm not too sure. Really high corn mash bill um, with a little bit of malted barley and a little bit of rye. Um, all bourbons, all ryes will contain malted barley just to kickstart the enzyme and the alcohol solution a little bit quicker. So with this we should be expecting some typical Jack Daniel smells but with a few more interesting things along the way. So as with all American whiskey this is natural colour and it is just a lovely kind of classic maple syrup colour. Um, I don't know if it's chill filtered or not, it probably is because a lot of standard bourbon is chill filtered. So we will kick off with the smell. On the subject of looking like maple syrup, it smells like maple syrup. It is rather sweet, as you would expect. A lot of people always ask, you know, what makes, is Jack a bourbon? Is it a whiskey? What can you say? Well, it's technically, it is a bourbon. It follows all the rules of making a bourbon. But it does one additional process, which is called the Lincoln County process, which is they just filter it through charcoal, 10 feet of maple fed charcoal, and that differentiates it. And that was something that Jack wanted to bring in when uh, the bourbon industry was kicking off in the early and sort of the latter part of the 1800s. Uh, these guys were established in like 1866, I believe, so the mid part even. He wanted to differentiate himself from those Kentuckians who were just, you know, making bourbon the classic way. And he thought, you know, filter it through charcoal, take out some of those natural impurities. And that's kind of what gives Jack its signature taste. Along with George Dickel, which is another Tennessee whiskey. See, you get the usual suspects really. Uh, maple syrup, banana bread, uh, kind of corn bread, caramel, vanilla, nice bit of pineapple, kind of umptuous, kind of succulent mango flavors. Dark chocolate which is a little bit unusual for a bourbon. I normally get milk chocolate, but this one's got something a little bit bitter kicking around. It does smell a bit more intense than the standard number seven. I was actually drinking the regular number seven last night because I knew I was going to do this today. And there are qualities of it that do make it a little bit different. Let's have a taste. still taste corn. I always like that about American whiskey meat, you still taste base spirit. I always think that's quite good. It's got some power to it. 
considering it's only, I say only 43%, you know, on average we tend to review things at like 50 and a few kind of things that are higher. But that bittersweet note I mentioned on the nose comes back a little bit in the taste. So you do get that kind of dark chocolate, slightly herbal vanilla when you've got a bit too much, uh, if you ever buy like a tube of vanilla pods and you just kind of smell it, or smell them all together. It smells quite herbaceous. It's kind of got that going on. It tastes a little bit like burnt toast. You know, when you leave your toast and you're breading your toaster for a bit too long and it goes just a little bit black. It's got that going on. But then it's kind of like you've smothered it in honey. Because there's that wonderful sweet virgin oak. It just kind of takes everything over. Being brutally honest, there is quite a lot going on with that. It is not your very... It has the typical things that American whiskey and Jack Daniels has. There's a few other things going on as well. Things that aren't in the regular black label. And towards the finish, drying, still a little bit herbaceous. The sweetness dies off quite quickly. You are left with this very intense, almost savoury style of Jack Daniels. Mm. Score-wise, it's quite an interesting thing to gauge. Because it's the same number seven recipe, just bottled at 43%. And it's somewhat the same across the board with a lot of Jack Daniels stuff. So regular number seven is what is sold all around the world. Gentleman Jack is regular Jack Daniels, but it's filtered through an additional three feet of uh, charcoal. Single barrel is obviously just one barrel, bottled at 45%. Uh, then they do like the Sinatra and the 150th bottles and all that kind of thing. Um, so there's obviously you know, special editions, they've got different cask influences and they're higher ABVs. Whereas, it'd be interesting to try all three of these side by side just to see if there's all three of these, all seven of these bottles side by side, just to see if there is any sort of contrasting differences. Because um, even though they're all made from the same recipe, each one will hopefully be as consistent as the other. But yeah, number seven, bottled at 43%, for £25 a bottle. It's a seven out of ten. It's a perfectly respectable whiskey, with some more interesting flavour notes than what I expected. And I suppose it is a little bit of a nostalgia trip for me, because... I imagine like most younger drinkers across the world, I'm just starting to approach my mid-twenties now. This guy is kind of the reason I started drinking whiskey. Um, Jack and Coke was the first whiskey-based drink I ever ordered, then I tried Glenfiddich, then I tried Dalmore, and it kind of gets your ball rolling. So for me, this is quite a nostalgic drink, and ever since I've been legally allowed to buy whiskey, I've always had some form of bottle of Jack Daniels kicking around, so it's quite an important whiskey for me. And indeed quite important whiskey for the world, because without this brand and a few others, you could probably call them like the icons of whiskey, things like Jack, Johnny, uh, Jim Beam, Glenfiddich, Shivas, uh, you know, these days, Yamazaki. Without these guys, we probably wouldn't have the market we have now, because, you know, these guys kind of kicked advertising off to a global stage, especially the Scotch brands in the 1960s. And, you know, thanks to people like Frank Sinatra and Slash and Jimmy Page, you know, they're always kind of seen chugging down a bottle of Jack Daniels, so, you know, Jack's got a kind of rock and roll history going on with it. And as a guitarist, I, you know, I like to indulge myself in as much of that as possible. So, yeah, Jack, Master Distiller number one at 43%, is a solid 7 out of 10 whiskey. Um, I remember mentioning before that it's, they've done the same mash build for like 70 plus years now. That's just changed. They've just released a single barrel rye which I had the joy of trying a couple of weeks ago. And it doesn't really taste anything like a rye that you would expect. It's a super high rye content. It's about 70, it's in the high 70% rye content. And still charcoal filtered and all that kind of thing. But it smells like strawberries. It's a very, very sweet, easy going rye. It's not as dry and spicy as things like Sazerac and Bullet. It's a very Jack style of rye. 
Um, so that should be coming out quite soon, actually. Um, keep your eyes out Christmas time, because that'll be around. And yeah, see if you can pick one up, because I'm going to be getting one, because I think it's quite interesting. But yes, folks, that's been Jack Daniel's Master Distiller number one. And we're coming towards the end of the year now. And I've only been doing this since September. So I need to review a few more things for you before the year's up. And especially my whiskies of the year. I'm going to try and get five bottles together that I think have been my whiskies of the year. And one of them will come at number one. Um, hopefully you'll all be enthralled by that video. But yes, thank you very much. I've been Phil. That's been Jack number seven. That's a seven out of ten whiskey. And I will see you all next week. See you around. Thank you.